okay so the next question that we're going to be doing is n meetings in one room and let's see what the question says first so we are given a start time and an end time of meetings so zeroth index represents the zeroth meeting start time and end time one -th index start and end time of the one -th meeting and two -th meeting three -th meeting four fifth and so on so what we can do is we can write this in this manner also the start time and the end time so this is what we are given and what we have to do is we are given a single meeting room so what we have to do is we have to rearrange these meetings in such a way that this meeting room is always occupied or another way of saying this is what is the maximum number of meetings that we can arrange in this meeting room and there could be sometimes let's say three to five is reserved for one -th meeting but there is another meeting that is starting from four and ending at six so there is only one meeting that could occur at any time either it could be this one or either it could be this one so what we have to do is we have to rearrange these meetings in such a way that the maximum number of meetings can occur okay so all of this aside so now the question is a bit more clear okay so one thing that we can do is we can actually arrange these meetings according to the end time and why the end time is because that if we arrange these meetings according to the end time then we have one thing clear that no matter let's say this meeting is actually ending at two so no matter what happens before this that means let's say the meeting started at one or zero so that that part doesn't matter now we know that this meeting is actually going to end at two so we can arrange some meetings after that so if you arrange these me meetings according to the end time then we have space for the rest of the meetings so let's say let's uh, make it as a meeting is starting at one and ending at nine but there is another meeting that is actually starting at one and ending at two so if we arrange these meetings according to the end time then now we know that if we arrange this meeting first then we have space for the rest of the meetings after two so the three to whatever let's say 10 slot is going to be available now but if we would have chosen the meeting that is starting from one and ending at nine then the space is actually going to get occupied for this range so that is why we are choosing to actually arrange it according to the end time okay so this part is clear but there could be a case that two meetings are actually ending at the same time so now what we can do in this case is we are going to choose the meeting which is going to start as late as possible so that means that let's say a meeting is starting at one ending at three there is another meeting that is starting at two and ending at three so we are going to give the meeting which is starting as late as possible the preference because the time range for this is actually going to be a bit more low so that means that even though one one to three is occupying three space of time but two to three is actually occupying two space of time but they are both ending at the same so here we can see that 
the meeting which is which is starting a bit late is going to give us more space for the rest of the meetings so that is why we are going to sort it according to the late meeting the meeting which is starting as late as possible in the case of this when the ending time is equal so both of these things aside so let's do the sorting and let's see what is the result after that so in this case it is actually a bit more sorted in a manner so we are going to sort according to end time so 3 comma 4 0 comma 6 5 comma 7 now in this case the ending time is actually equal for these cases but what we are going to do we are going to give preference to the one which is starting the meeting as late as possible so the 8 to 9 is going to get a preference and after that 5 comma 9 so now we have arranged the meetings according to a sorting algorithm so basically the sorting algorithm says sort according to end time sort according to end time and if end time of one meeting is equals to end time of second meeting give preference to the one to the one which is starting which is starting late so that is the sorting algorithm that we are using so you have to actually create a custom comparator for this okay now the sorting is aside now what we can do is we can create a counter variable because we have to actually give the maximum number of meetings that we can arrange and what we can do is we have a start time and an end time so we are going to store a start and end time in here so initially this count is actually going to be one because what we are going to do we are going to store the start and end time of the first index this one and we are going to start our iteration not from here but here okay so now what we are going to do is we are going to check is the start time is actually lying in this range or not or another way of saying it this is whatever this start array ith index is so is this actually lying in the range of this or another way of saying this is is it actually clashing with a previous meeting or not in this case it is not because 3 is actually starting after 2 so what we can do replace this with 3 comma 4 and make this counter as 2 because now we can arrange two meetings in the meeting room let's move forward now in this case we can see that 0 is actually starting before the 4 so that means that 0 to 6 is actually lying in this so that means it is actually clashing with 3 to 4 meeting 1 so what we are going to do is we are going to ignore this meeting because we don't want any clashes okay now we are going to check is my 5 is actually lying in, in this range or not so in this case it is not so that means we can arrange this meeting so increase the count to 3 and replace the start and end with 5 comma 7 let's move forward is my 8 actually lying before the end time before or equal this 7 or not so in this case it is not so that means we can arrange this meeting make it 8 comma 9 increase the count to 4 and now is a meeting that is starting at 5 is actually lying before or equal to 9 or not so yes this means that this meeting is actually going to clash with this 
so we are going to ignore this and finally we are out, out of bounds and we are going to return this 4 as our answer so that means we can arrange 4 meetings at max and this is this is it this is the algorithm so the time complexity is actually going to be n log n because we are going to sort this and another n for iterating at our meetings so we are going to consider the highest one highest degree complexity so n log n is going to be our time complexity and for the space complexity because we are actually going to create a pair for sorting this because that is a bit easier so you can actually do it without using the pairs but uh, in my case I have used it so big O n space complexity in my case so this is the time and space complexity and if we look at the code here so the, here you can see I have created a custom comparator and I'm checking the end time and I'm sorting according to end time and if my end time is actually going to be equal then I'm comparing which is the meeting which is starting as late as possible so this is how I'm using the comparator and here you can see I've created a custom pair vector for sorting and I have pushed it in the meetings pair after that I have used the sorting and after the sorting I'm using start and end and comparing the start and end times initially my count is 1 and I'm starting my iteration with 1th index and if this is actually not clashing my meeting which means if my let's consider this meeting is not clashing with the start and end meetings then I'm actually going to increase my count and replace the start and end with the new meetings start and end time and I'm going to keep doing this and finally I'm going to return my count and basically that's about it for this question.